weather is upon us, and that means it's time to start pruning the trees on your property. Carson Arthur is joining us remotely. So excited. He's got all the pruning tips we need to know. So, Carson, you say fall is the perfect time to prune our trees. Why is that? Yeah, it's true. I mean, this is beautiful weather, but this is the time to get outside. Even my neighbors out with their tractor right now, all of the trees are starting to go dormant. And what that means is all the leaves are starting to change color. And when the leaves change color, it means the chlorophyll is now coming out of the leaves, going down into the roots. That is the perfect time to prune your trees because now you're not doing any damage to them. And all the energy that might be in the leaves is now stored in the spot where it should be for the winter time. Now you've got certain areas you say that you should be pruning uh, on your plants. What areas are those? So there are four things you're going to look for at this time of year. The first thing is you're going to clean up any dead or diseased branches. Now, Tracy, I'm going to show you this here. This is a fall webworm nest. Some people might call it tent caterpillars. This is actually perfectly fine. This is not the type of thing that you want to prune out. But removing this and cleaning all this nasty webbing is great for the tree because this is going to allow these branches next year to produce new leaves. So that's one thing we're going to do is clean up the trees. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to thin them out. This tree here is getting a little bit crowded. It's getting a little bit too much density into the center. So we're going to go in and we're going to prune out some of these branches, just removing the ones that need to be thinned. And we're going to prune tight to the the trunk tight to the branch that we're removing it from. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to raise the canopy. That means all the branches down here that are actually causing congestion, we're going to take off. We're going to remove all of those. And finally, we're going to look for these guys. These are suckers. These need to come right off at the base and get rid of all of the suckers because these take away energy from the main tree itself. And when you're down here, the one thing you might want to consider doing is adding some cardboard around the bottom of your tree, wrapping it in like this. Then bury the cardboard in mulch. This will prevent any more suckering, will provide extra moisture retention around the roots, and it will help the tree get through the wintertime. I love how you call those little branches on the ground suckers. Like, what did they ever do to you, Carson? Okay, and here's the other thing. Uh, you know. <laughs> if I have to clean those cobwebs like you did with my bare hands, that's going to be a nope. So let's talk about the tools we can use for pruning. What have you got for us? <laughs> Well, you saw me using these pruners. These are bypass pruners, which means the blade bypasses the saddle, which means these are good for doing clean cuts. This is for living wood. This type of pruner, which I didn't use, is an anvil pruner, which means the blade stops on the actual um, guard right there. This is a crushing tool. This is used for dead wood only. One of the other tools that I'm in love with right now is my little chainsaw. I go all over the place with this little guy. It's so quick and easy, zipping around, cutting all of the branches off. And then there's the big boy version of it too. Now this is my new favorite tool for trees. This is a pole pruner. And up you go. I can get almost 30 feet with this pole pruner, removing some of the branches that need to be taken down that might cause any issues come winter time. Okay, you totally need that for your property because you've got so many trees on your property. But don't go everywhere with the little chainsaw, okay? People are going to be worried if you do that. Okay. Talk to me about <laughs> staying safe. If you are using a chainsaw or you're out there pruning your trees, what do we need to have in terms of gear to keep us safe? Well, the first thing is always going to be safety glasses. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses because whenever you're cutting wood, bits will fly off. Bark, little bits of sawdust will come down on you. If you're using heavier tools, heavy leather gloves are really important. Finger safety, you're right in there all the time, as you saw with that cobweb nest. You also want to consider wearing pants thick pants, especially if you're operating a chainsaw. One of the major concerns with chainsaws is if the blade comes off. If the blade comes off, it can actually do a lot of damage because it's still flipping around. So he wearing heavy duty pants to stop that is really important. And finally, ear protection. Even something as simple as earbuds or ear pods are fantastic for controlling the sound that goes into your ears. Even little battery operated chainsaws like this can make a lot of noise. So be smart about it. Protect your ears, your eyes, your hands, and your skin. That is so good. Really good tips there. Uh, one last thing, when you're pruning your plants, do you need to go back and seal any of the places where you cut the branches off? 
Yeah, this was a big myth. Do not go back with the paint or the sealer that we used to use back in the 80s and early 90s. Science has now shown that the trees actually can heal themselves much more effectively if we don't mess around with it. Just make sure that when you cut off the limb, you're cutting it as close to the trunk as possible. That way, year after year, the bark will eventually close right over top of the wound and the tree will take care of itself. Much more effective. If you paint it, you're more likely to encourage fungal growth inside or even insect damage. So stay away from the paints just go nature's natural remedy Carson such great information thank you for that